Hey team, welcome back to Amber Oaks Ranch. We're gonna be taking apart the steering cylinder on this 5320, John Deere 5320. It's uh, leaking out of both of the seals uh, on both sides. It's been leaking a while on one side. Um, so I'm gonna have to remove that steering cylinder. This side has got a cap on it. That cap has to come off and then the whole rod comes out this one side. Uh, so I, I really need to do this on the bench. So I'm gonna disassemble some hydraulic lines, take off the tie reds, rods, put it on the bench and see where we get. All right, we're gonna start by taking off this tie rod. I've got the nut loose here. This is a, a self-locking nut. It's got the little nylon on the inside. Um, if you'll back this down, you can beat on this end and perhaps pop that up. Uh, that way you don't mess up the threads on the end. Um, but for me, I couldn't, uh, well, combination of I couldn't find my hammer that was big enough. And uh, I happen to have a, what I call a pickle bar. I don't know, tie rod end puller. That'll help me get in there and get that out. With this tool here. Was able to get uh, both tie rods off uh, you see these uh, four cap head screws uh, that hold the cover plate on this is the four-wheel drive model um, it's different with the two-wheel drive so I've already moved one of those back the other three off it says to then rotate the wheel to the uh, left and that cap will pop off I believe the cap is already off because it's leaking back there all right by uh, Turning the steering wheel, I was able to get that cap off, uh, just like the book says. And now I got to remove that fitting, hydraulic fitting that uh, feeds the cylinder on this side and then on the other side. Okay, to uh, remove the tie rod, uh, you basically have to keep it from rotating as you remove it. And that means you have to put uh, a wrench on one end and then I've gone around to this other side and I have uh, was able to, with a um, cheater bar, get that to rotate. And so by taking the one off on the right-hand side, if you're sitting in the, if you're sitting in the uh, seat, um, the one opposite of the flange that we just took off with the four bolts, then you can unthread that tie rod and then slip the rod out, leaving the cylinder in place. And then I believe you just tap off that cap there and you're able to replace those seals. We'll see how it goes. Okay, let's uh, recap for a second here, team. Uh, I got the cylinder rod out. Uh, the cap is uh, from the left-hand side is still on. Tie rod from the left-hand side is still on. Tie rod for the right hand side is, uh, is is removed. You can see right in the middle there is the uh, drive piece of the hydraulic cylinder that goes left to right when hydraulic fluid is applied. This um, hydraulic cylinder here is still in place. You can see the uh, seals on the inside and. Uh, I'm not really sure how to get that out. It, it, it looks like you can just tap on that and that whole thing assembly is supposed to come out of there. But when I look at how it's assembled, I don't think that's the case. So I'm going to try to just change those seals in situ and do the uh, replacement of those cap seals right there. On the other side, I did have to remove the tire to uh, get that rod all the way out. Uh, so you may want to just start there. But uh, let's proceed and start replacing some seals. All right, here's the cap here. As you can see, there's a series of seals inside. And then on the back side, there's an O-ring. 
Uh, so we're going to take those out and replace them. All right, we have the, uh, I've taken the seals out. Um, the O-ring on that side, which I've already put one back in, and then I've taken the seals out of the inside. The way this goes is there's a, uh, this seal is on top, then this seal, and then that white one there. And so looking at the new ones, the configuration, that goes on top of this one. And this one has got, you know, it's cupped on the bottom, and then that sits on top of like that. And so those three will go inside up here, and we'll get those installed, and then we'll do the same uh, then on this uh, cap that's still in the tractor, it's still on the tractor. Okay, here we are looking at the uh, center plunger. Um, so to make it turn, hydraulic fluid will enter either side, exit the other side. So we have a, a grouping of seals here. Um, we're gonna remove these and install new ones. I do have my rod in the vise, but I'm protecting it with a leather glove there. Uh, this is actually how I got the tie rods off, uh, so it's good to have an extra hand there. So we're going to uh, remove these, easy enough, uh, but not with one hand. So get those off of there, get this middle one out, and replace them with new. All right, here I got my seals all installed on this end. put the uh, rod back into the cylinder. There you can see my new seals on the, I don't know what you call that device. And then uh, my cap is on over here with new seals. So I'm just gonna slide the rod in and reconnect my tie rods. All right, just like that, I was able to get the rod in there. Actually, it wasn't just like that at all. Um, it helps to, use a pipe clamp to go around that center uh, set of seals as you're trying to get it into the cylinder. Compress it with this pipe clamp uh, and then it'll slide into that outer cylinder. And uh, as it's going in, you just move the pipe clamp back. Re really the only the inner seal, the middle seal uh, was the only one that was a tight fit. Uh, so I'll put those cap screws on put the tie rods back on, hook up my hydraulic hoses, and that'll be done. So the tie rod end is uh, is, is tapered and, and fits into that arm on the, on the uh, steering hub or wheel hub. Um, and the bolt underneath, or nut rather underneath, is uh, it's hard to get on because when you start tightening that up, it wants to rotate uh, at the tie rod joint there at the top because it's a ball it pivots in there and it enables your wheel to go up and down and uh, not mess up your steering so how do you get that to work so as you can see here i have a uh, what i call an f clamp attached um it's hard to get on to the you know you can't really get onto the bolt because you got to get your wrench on there so i put this little piece of square tubing on it to span and allow me to uh put some force down on the tie rod end and still get in there and do some work. So hopefully that's a little trick that helps. I'm sure there's a tool available for pushing down on that while you tighten it up. You could probably get one at your local hardware store, uh, rent one, but this is where I'm at here. We're on a farm and this is how we get things done. Well, that ought to do it. Got the wheels back on, got the tie rods all connected. While I was there, I lubricated uh, this uh, front pivot and the one behind it check the uh, oil level in all my uh, wheel hubs and then the uh, front differential so appreciate you following along hopefully you learned something there take care we'll see you next time at the ranch